Hey, fifth grade, I hope you guys are having a good week at home. Um, in this video, what I want us to do is we're going to learn the melody to Star Wars. Now, unfortunately, since school is out for the year, we will not be able to play Star Wars um, like I had promised you, but I still want you to learn it, and this week, that's what we're going to do. So to play Star Wars, depending on your instrument, some people are going to find that it's better to play it on the B flat scale, or some people are going to find that it's better to play it on the F scale. In this video, we're going to review a few things. We're going to play through the notes of our B flat scale. We are going to play Star Wars on the B flat scale. Then we're going to review our notes of the F scale, followed by playing Star Wars on the F scale. Depending on your instrument, I want you to pick whichever scale is easier for you to be successful and I want you to send me a video or audio or just fill out the Google form telling me what you practiced this week and let me know how successful you were. Were you able to play it? Did you understand it? All that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you have not done so yet, on Google Classroom there is the file that says using scales to play Star Wars, make sure that you download or print that out or just have it big enough even on a screen that you can see it and make sure that you have it for your specific instrument. So if you try to play the saxophone music on a trumpet, it's not gonna work out. So without further ado, let's get into this. Now let's just review the notes of our scale depending on what instrument I play. So let's say I am a flute player. If I'm a flute player in the B flat scale, my two flats are my B flat and my E flat. So the notes would be B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, and B flat. Review those notes now if you have not done so. If I'm a clarinet player, when I say concert B flat scale, I am actually using my C scale for the clarinet, just like how we did on our first scale sheet. Your notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. None of those notes have a uh, flat or a sharp next to it, so for you, you have nothing written in the key signature. Review those notes now. If I'm an alto saxophone player, in the B flat scale, I actually don't have any flat notes. I have one sharp note, so my notes would be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Next, we have our French horn players. French horn, you are playing starting on your F note, and your only flat is B flat on that third middle line. So your notes are F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F. And finally, we have the tuba players and the trombone players and the baritones, and they have two flats as well, like the flutes, but they are bass clef instruments. So your notes are B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, and B flat. If I'm a tuba player, I don't really play in the music staff. I play below the music staff. Doesn't matter because this B flat would make every B flat in the entire music staff, if it's up here or way down there, all of them would be flat if it told you so. So with that, review those notes of your B flat scale and let's get ready to play it on whole notes. On your worksheet, you have two sides. Side one has the title and steps one, two, and three on it. On the other side, it has steps four, five, and six. Make sure that you are on page one with steps one, two, and three at this time. Just like how we play this in band, we are going to use a metronome to play along with. If you cannot hear the video that you're watching right now while you play. I want you to maybe try to figure out if you can plug a speaker into it or ask your parents if you could put it on the TV or something like that just so that you can hear yourself and the video at the same time so you know that you're playing right with me rhythmically. Now we are going to play whole notes. This is step one playing from the beginning of the scale going up using our whole notes. Everyone is going to tap your foot to this speed one, get ready to play. One, two, one, two, whole notes, go. If you need to review 
those notes on whole notes, I want you to pause the video, back up about 30 seconds and do that again. This video is not supposed to be played from the beginning all the way to the end with you just watching and playing along. It's supposed to be stopped, rewinded, try that section again, move a little further, go back, try that section again, and keep doing that so that by the time you get to the end of the video and you're playing these Star Wars, you know that what you're doing is always good sounding notes. Let's move on to step two. Now we have a rhythm and the rhythm is going to be quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, quarter note. And the rhythm would be one, two, three, and four. Now for each of these rhythms, you might remember this from our warm ups. <laughs> Everyone say hi to Muse. That is my cat. I named my cat Muse after my favorite band, which is Muse. It's an awesome rock band. And uh, if you have some time on YouTube, maybe Google some of their stuff. It's some good stuff. Just make sure you ask your parents first. Now let's play step two. The rhythm is one, two, three, and four. And we are going to play this on the notes of our concert B flat scale. I'm going to show this one on the clarinet so that the clarinet players can practice their high B, which uses your left pinky and your right pinky, and your high C, which just has the right pinky down. Here we go. This is rhythm two. Step two. One, two, one, two, ready. time with that on that rhythm I want you to go back and try it again something that might be successful is making sure that you're using your tongue when I am articulating I don't think just one two three and four I think two 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 if I'm on a clarinet I think tall where my tongue starts on the tip of the reed same thing with saxophone and I pull away tall 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 <laughs> On the saxophone, it would sound like this. And on a brass instrument, like a trumpet, it would sound like this. So each time I'm using my tongue, I'm just using it in a different way depending on what I play. I want you to experiment with it and see how and what works for you. In the next part of the video, we're going to talk about the rhythm of this piece. Now, let me remind you, everyone plays different notes. So the letters that I would say for the trumpet, C, G, F, E, D, C, G, are different than the, let's say, flute, B flat, F, E flat, D, C, B flat, F, and that is fine. That doesn't matter. What everyone has in common are the rhythms that go left to right. Everyone, regardless of your instrument, starts out with a half note, followed by another half note, and that is the same for the whole time. So, in the part of the video, even though I'm talking from the perspective of a trombone and a baritone and tuba player using the bass clef, it doesn't matter. Just listen to the numbers and how I play from the beginning to the end in terms of the rhythm, and then you'll be fine to do that on your own. So here is the trombone and the baritone example on the board, but if you're a trumpet player or a tuba player or a French horn player, I'm not talking about notes. I'm purely talking about rhythms which go left to right. So on your music, you still have a half note here. It might not be that location or that clef, but you do have a half note followed by a half note, and it should look the same. Now let's talk about the rhythm behind this. So first, we have four beats per measure like usual. So that means that whatever we do, we have to fill up each measure, kind of like a cup of water, all the way before we go on to the next measure. So here we have a half note B flat, and that will last for two beats. So one and the line means we'll play through two. Now here we have our next note, which is another half note, and that would begin 
on beat three and last through four. But what is this little arced line right there? Well, that is called a tie. Kind of like how you tie a knot or tie two things together, you're basically making it bigger and longer. So here, this note is a half note and it's tied to another half note. That means that we basically add them together. If a half note is worth two beats and another half note is worth two beats, this note will last a total of four beats. It just happens to not start on beat one. So here we have bum, bum. See how I held that out for four beats like this? Bum, bum for four total beats. And that lasted all the way through then beat one and the next beat two. So now we can go on to beat three. Now, even if I didn't understand what a tie was, I could still look at this measure and say, I start with a half note, so that would be beats one and two. This would be beat three. And do you remember from rhythm six, when we have two eighth notes, what we put on there? We're gonna put a four and. Now, now let's talk about this high note. If you're a trombone player or baritone player, this is your high B flat. Trumpet players, that would be you playing your high C. French horn players, that would be playing your high F. And if I'm a tuba player, my high B flat is this one. My low B flat's down here, so my high B flat's here. That means that everyone needs to be comfortable with those B flat lips, your F lips, and your high B flat lips. If you can't get this note, Maybe spend a little bit more time back on the steps one through six. Make sure that those top notes get clearer and clearer, remember? Firm lips, aim your air down, and use a lot of air behind it. So, for that first note, that will be another half note that will last for beats one and two. And look here, we have the same exact thing happening that we did right here. This is gonna be starting on beat three and last through beat four, the next beat one and the next beat two. And so the same rhythm and the same notes happen here. So let's just sing so far what we have. One, three, three, four, and one, three, three, four, and. And now let's go down to the next line of music. Here we have almost the same exact rhythm as we did right here. We have a high note, one and two. Then we have our three, and that lasts for a total of four beats. And now here, the notes are different. We have three, four, and, but notice here the notes just went Ba ba ba, and they go down. These notes, ba ba ba, you go back up to this note or your fa note. So, do so, fa mi fa, re. And this note is probably your easiest rhythm on the page. It is your whole note, which lasts for a total of four beats. Finally, in this last measure, we have a whole rest, which means that you count to four, keeping a steady beat, tapping your foot. And then this is called a repeat sign. And a repeat sign means that we go back to the beginning and we play it over again. So if I go very slowly with a metronome and I'm to play this, you will see the rhythm as it goes by. Ready, go.
so far, if you need any more help going back on the rhythms, I want you to do so. But remember, you know how it sounds. You've heard me play it. You've probably heard it in the movie. And I bet as long as you know what the note names are and how it's supposed to go, you can probably figure it out. Remember to always tap your foot and make sure that you're reading the correct rhythm. Now let's practice the theme of Star Wars in B flat concert scale. And we're gonna do this two measures at a time. First, let me show you some stuff on the saxophone. So measures one and two sound like this. And it's a weird sp spot to stop right there right at the end of that eighth note, but that's okay because when we move on to the next measures three and four, it'll make more musical sense. It'll sound right is what I'm saying. So I know it sounds bum 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 is a weird part to stop, but that's okay because later when we do the whole thing, it'll sound right. So here we start, we have your low note, no no, ba ba ba. And on the saxophone, Make sure that you're comfortable going from your G up to your D by adding your right hand and then immediately going back to your C right here. Everyone, let's play measures one and two together at a slow tempo. Tap your foot. One, two, one, two, ready, play. stopping point. Now let's go ahead and play those two measures again at a faster tempo about here. One, two, ready, go. If you had a little trouble either playing it at the slow version or the medium speed version, I want you to stop, back up the video, and try this again. But now let's play it at the correct version, which is 100 beats per minute. Two, one, two, ready. Finally, let's do this again, and we're gonna move on to measures three and four. Now, in measures three and four, I'm going to use a different instrument. I'm going to play it on the trombone. For measures three and four, I begin on my high note. So if I'm a trombone player, a baritone player, or a tuba player, this is going to be my high B flat. If I'm a trumpet player, this is going to be my high C. And if I'm a French horn player, this is going to be my high F. French horn players, high F is really, really high. Don't worry about it. Try your best, and you might feel a little bit better playing the other version, but that's okay. Here's measures three and four. Again, it stops at a weird moment because the eighth notes happen right at the end of the measures. If I keep going, it sounds more correct. Let's do measures three and four at this speed of 60 beats per minute. Two, one, two, big breath. Now, trombone players specifically when you go down to that C, you need to quickly be able to move back to first position when you go on to your next high B flat note. Let's do measures three and four faster at the medium speed of 80 beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, big breath. One, two, ready. <gasps> Finally, let's do that at 100 beats per minute at the correct speed. This is measures three and four. You're playing along. 
One, two, one, two, ready? So, if you didn't quite get that so far, that's okay. Stop, go back and do measures three and four together. But now we're gonna do measures one, two, three, and four. And you're gonna hear that these smaller puzzle pieces of music are building toward the entire theme that you hear at the beginning of Star Wars. This is measures one, two, three, and four at the medium tempo of 80. Again, make sure that you're comfortable going from your second to last low note up to your high note. And for this one, I'm going to do it on the trumpet. So for the trumpet, I need to go from my D all the way up to my high C. Make sure that you are not pushing and make sure you aim air down to help your notes go high. That is for all brass players, not just trumpet. Trombones, baritones, French horns do the same thing. Here we go. This is the first four measures at 80 beats per minute. One, two, one. Two, ready. Now, let's do that faster at a hundred beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, one, two, big air. And similar to how we just played measures three and four, we now will move on and play measures five and six. Now measures five and six are very, very similar to three and four. They're actually the exact same rhythm where we have a half note, to a half note, tied to a half note, followed by a quarter note, and the two eighth notes. But with the two eighth notes, the note changes. So this is measures five and six back at my slow tempo. One, two, ready, go. Notice how I went ba ba ba. I went from my fa note to my mi note back up to my fa note, which was different than what I did in measure four. If you're not really comfortable with what my do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, or do notes are, go back, take a look at measure or step one, and then you'll review those notes right there. Now let's keep going. Here's measure five and six, a little faster, and now I'm on the flute. Same notes, the rhythm's correct, should sound right, but we're bouncing around to all these different instruments. One, two, measure five and six. One, two, ready. And again, a weird stopping point, and all we need is that one final note to make it sound right. Let's do measures five and six again at the full speed of 100. One, one, two, one, two, ready. And again, it only needs that one note. If I add my final note, which is going to be C on the flute. It's going to be D on the clarinet, trumpet, or tenor sax. It's going to be a G on the French horn, and it's going to be an A on the saxophone. Whatever our last note is of the piece will make the entire line really sound correct. So this is measures five and six, adding on measure seven. And I'm gonna slow it down just to 80 because it's only adding a whole note. Here we go. One, two, ready. Don't 
Doesn't that one note make the entire thing really come together? Now, I'm gonna play from the beginning all the way to the end of this on the clarinet, and you're gonna play along with me. We are going back down to measure, or to 60 beats per minute. This is going to be all of Star Wars using the B-flat scale. Here we go. One, two, nice and slow, two, ready, go. time on that go back try it again at the slow tempo and now we're gonna go back up to 100 which is the full speed everyone take a nice deep breath think about what you're gonna do think about the fact that you're gonna need to move your eyes faster and think just a little quicker and the more you do slow and steady right understanding measures one and two then understanding measure three it's gonna be way better than if you just try to play from the beginning to the end just trying to figure it out. All right, so here is the full version in B flat. One, two, tap your foot. One, two, ready. <gasps> played in B flat. Now, if I'm a clarinet player or a French horn player, maybe a trumpet player, that was probably a little difficult getting up to my highest note. Bum 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 bum. Whatever that high note is might be difficult. So now, let's learn it a different way using notes that might be a little easier for you. Now, we're going to play it using our concert F scale. Now we are on the second page where it has the F scale and whole notes as step four. Now, for your concert F scale, every instrument is going to have different combinations of notes. Let's begin with the flutes. So, flute players, in concert F, you only have one flat note, and that's the B flat. So you start on F, and all of your notes are going to be the regular letters other than the one that has the flat next to it. So it's gonna be F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E natural. So go review what your E natural finger is. Thumb, one, two, three, one, two, four in my right hand. And finally, your high F there. Now, clarinet players, trumpet players, and tenor sax players, your notes have what is called your F sharp. Now, the trumpet players and the clarinet players, your F sharp will be on this space that you're used to the F being on, but we write it up here just to get it out of the way. Since that is the every good boy does fine, the F line, we can just put it right up there. That means that my notes are gonna be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G. Tenor sax players, you will start on this G and you actually will be playing that high F sharp. So make sure that you understand what the fingerings are for the clarinet, trumpet, and the tenor sax players. And now we'll move on to the alto sax players. Alto saxophones, your scale has two sharps. Let me try to get the light on it right. So here we have, same as over here, we have our top line F sharp, which you guys played in your concert B flat scale. And then we also have our C sharp. Now for you, the C sharp is nothing is pressed. So you need to 
Trust the neck strap, have your right thumb be sturdy, and don't move so that the C sharp, you don't want to lose it because you don't really have much to really trust in terms of balancing. French horns, your scale, oh, so saxes, you have G, or you have D is your first note, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Those are your notes. Now, French horns. French horns, for your F concert scale, you have no sharps and flats. So you just have regular F, G, A, B, C, D, E. I'm sorry. You have your C notes starting with C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So for French horns, I would recommend learning it in this key because you don't have to play that high F. Your highest note will be your C, which you guys are already comfortable with. And finally, we have our tuba players, trombone players, and baritone players. You all are going to have the challenge of playing your low F, which is here for trombone and play baritone players, and all the way down there for the tuba players. Your notes only have one flat, which is your B flat. So you have F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E natural, and F. For the E natural tuba players and baritone players, it's my second finger. And for trombone players, it's second position, just a, about an inch away from first position. So now that we've reviewed what the note names are for all of our different instruments, let's play step four together. Now we're going to play step four using whole notes of our F concert scale. This would be my G scale if I'm a trumpet player or a tenor sax player or clarinet player. This would be my D scale if I am a alto sax player. This would be my C scale as a French horn player. And this, as the name says, this is my F scale for my flutes and my low brass players. Here it is, whole notes at 80 beats per minute. One, tap your foot, two, one, two, ready, go. So that was that on that was our concert F scale using whole notes. Now we're going to do the same exact scale again. I'm just going to play it on a different instrument for anyone who has a lower instrument than a clarinet. Now, for this, I'm going to go down to my low F, which is sixth position baritone player. I mean trombone players, or it's one and three baritone and tuba players. <laughs> So very relaxed lips and a lot of air. Here we go. Here is our F scale using whole notes again. Two, one, two, ready. Next, we're going to move on to step five, which will add a rhythm to the concert F scale. For this one, I'm going to play it on the trumpet. Here we go again. This is going to be the rhythm is one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. And here I'm going to show the trumpet players and baritone players. These are the same fingerings for you and tuba players. French horn, you're a little different. Here we go. One, two, one, two, step five, go. <laughs> And that was step five. If you need a little bit more time on that, go back to it, give it a shot, 
And now let's move on to playing Star Wars in the key of F concert. Just to show you what it sounded like on trumpet using my B flat notes. <laughs> And I have to hit that high C. If I use the notes of the G scale, it's much, much easier to get the same music out. Now, my G is my high note, and it's going to be a little easier. Clarinet players, I won't have to go all the way up to the high C, but I will use my low G, which will be good practice for playing those right hand notes. Flute players, if you have trouble going over and using rolling in and playing up to your high B flat, you will now relax and you'll play starting from your low note. And you'll be playing low flute. So that might be a little bit more helpful for you. Saxophone players, I would argue that it would be a little easier to play it using your B flat notes, but I really want you to try it using your D scale as well. French horn players, I'm going to play it your way this time, and this will mean that my first note is my C, and my high note will be my other C. Here we go. This is Star Wars in F. <laughs> And so what I want you to do to learn it in F, I want you to go back and I want you to practice measures one and two on your own using your how to practice sheet. If you need to watch how I did it using the B flat notes, back up the video. And then you're going to do measures three and four, five, six, seven and eight, and put them all together. So for this week, I want you to either have your parents send me a video by email of you playing this send me a video in the actual Google Classroom assignment, you can upload it, or if you can't send me a video, just fill out the Google form that says what you've been practicing this week and if you have any questions. With that, I miss you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy playing some Star Wars.